Hi there, and welcome to the Web Data Grid series, where I'd like to show you how to build an AJAX master detail type page using the Web Data Grid. Now, here's what it's going to look like when we're done. So we have a grid, and when we come into the, the grid and we click on a row, it creates an AJAX call that goes back to the server. It goes against a data repository that returns a strongly typed object up to the client. So that's serialized using JSON. And then what we do is we take that JSON object and apply the data to a client template. So it keeps the markup really clean and makes it very easy for developers to work with. Now what we're using within the grid is the activation behavior. So I've clicked on the first cell here, but if I press the tab key and go through each one of these, it will continue to work uh, as it activates each cell. Now, the way that many people might think of implementing something like this is to create a hidden column that would carry the primary key value of the individual record and basically look at that. Since we're using activation, one of the features that it, it has is that as you go from cell to cell, it does a JavaScript focus. It runs the focus uh, function. And since if, if you just use style sheets to hide a, a column, when it tries to do a focus, it will give you an error. So instead of doing a hidden column, what, what we're doing, let's take a look at the markup here. So within our table, instead of having the, the hidden column, we emit a span. And the ID is based off of the index of the row. So once we know the current cell and the, the current index that we're looking at, we can reach in, find this span, and then grab the primary key value. Once we have that primary key value, we'll create an AJAX call that'll go back to the server. And once our data is returned, then we'll fill up a client template. So here's the client template that we have. It's basically just a, a regular HTML structure. At first, it's hidden from the user with this style sheet uh, none, which basically does the display none. And then we just use JavaScript to fill in the inner HTML of each one of these items. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's start uh, building up the grid. So if I come into this page, it's just a standard ASP.NET page. Nothing's been added to it yet, and so the first thing that we need to stick on there is a script manager. I'm going to come over here and give it an ID of SM, just to keep everything nice and tidy. The next thing that we're going to need on the page is our web data grid itself, and then finally we will need an object data source. So let's configure the object data source first. I'm going to change the ID to ODS. Can you tell I like short IDs? And then when we configure the data source, we'll be looking at the book repository. Book repository is just a class that provides fake data for use in demos and testing. And so in this case, what we'll do is run the get books method and we'll, we'll pass in the argument of saying we only want five books back. This will make it easy to see what's happening underneath the grid as we do our AJAX calls. So once that's set up, we'll come over here and choose our data source to ODS, and now we have a, a grid set up with the columns that are associated with what comes back from the object. However, that's more than what we want. Really all we want for our purposes is uh, the titles. So we're going to get rid of ID, author, and the rest of these columns. So we're only left with the title column. Now once we have the title column, what we're going to do is convert this into a template field by clicking on this link down here. And that will create most of the markup that we need in order to make this happen. So let's go back to the source and take a look at what we've got. Uh, we're going to be programming against this data grid, so I'm going to change the ID to uh, DG for data grid. And then if we look at our template field, here we have uh, the template field declared, we have the item template, and then this label which houses the, the data binary uh, statement in order to emit out the, the data from our objects. Now it gives us a label here, and th that's fine, but that's not what I want to use in the end. I'd like to use a placeholder. And the placeholder works well for this type of an application because of a couple reasons. Number one, so it takes child control. So we're adding controls in between it, so we need that. It's a data bound control, so we know this data binder statement will work. And so we can come in and basically customize exactly what we want. So the first thing that we're doing is emitting out the title. So we can leave this line alone. The next thing that I want to do is stick a span tag in there so we have that hook in order to hide the primary key value from the user. 
So we'll apply our CSS class of none. And this basically does a display none, so it, it takes up no space on the page. And then we'll come in and copy this same statement. And we'll put that in as what's being inside of the span tag. But instead of title, we want to take a look at the ID member. Now the next thing that we need to do is give this span tag a unique ID. And one of the quickest and easiest ways I've found to do that is basically by maintaining a counter on, on the page. So we'll, we'll declare a protected variable in the code behind. As data binding is occurring on this control, um, we'll, we'll create a statement that will increment and also do a two string to it so it, it prints out the ID. It, it's a really nice kind of elegant way um, to, to get these sort of values without having to write any extra looping. So I'm going to stick B on here to stand for book and then we'll create a data binding statement here. And we'll say this index increment and then two string. Now we still need to create that field, but this will give us a unique value and convert it to a string each time. So let's drop back to the code behind and declare that, that field. We'll initialize the value to zero, so that way we start off our indexing with zero and that will match the index that we're, and that will match the indexes that we're going to look at um, when we're looking at the grid through JavaScript. So now we use this, this CSS class of none, so let's come up here and define that. We're going to open up a style tag. And so we'll call the class none. And we'll simply say display none. Easy enough. So at this point, let's run it and see what we've got. So here's our grid. We have each one of the, the listings. We'll go ahead and take off the height dimensions there so it, it squeezes on up, but so far it looks pretty good. So the next thing that we want to do is add the activation behavior. So if we switch back over to the designer and choose edit behaviors, you notice the first one available to us here is activation. And what activation does is it gives us client-side and server-side ways of tapping into the events that happen when a new cell is activated within the grid. So for what we're doing here, active cell changed, we want to basically point to a JavaScript function called cell changed. And you'll notice there's other things that you can tap into here as well. You can have specific CSS classes for active cells. But all we're interested right now is just tapping into this one client side event. So we'll hit apply and OK and save that. Infragistics. On the web at infragistics.com.